everyone. So I'm just dropping in for a hot minute to answer a question that I've been getting a little bit lately, uh, especially since the launch of my course, Queen Out, where I use a lot of different terms interchangeably for um, vulva, but where I use the word pussy quite a lot. And I keep getting this question, so why do I use the word pussy? Because for so many, this word you know, it makes us cringe uh, or flinch and understandably so because for so long it's been used as a word to denigrate, to insult or sneer and it's come to have very derogatory and negative connotations and the way that it's used in modern culture reminds us of the obscene or the pornographic. You know, that's something I hear a lot, it's like so porny. And I fully get it. It took me years to be able to say this word out loud myself without feeling embarrassed or repulsed or uncomfortable because of those exact reasons. Um, and it reminded me of sexism, misogyny, and being objectified and sexualized by the unconscious masculine. It made me squirm and shudder in its vulgarity and crassness. It also made me feel awkward and self-conscious because I was so uncomfortable and grossed out by my own pussy, by sexuality and genitals and all of that stuff. Because I had so much stored shame and internalized conditioning and guilt around all of this stuff. So all in all, the word pussy was something that I avoided saying and felt as an attack when I heard someone else say it, you know, attack an attack on my femininity, on my female body, on my womanhood. But you may have noticed that the word is being used more and more in feminist circles and by lots of really conscious, empowered women these days. And the reason is that we're reclaiming the pussy. We're refusing to be victimized and harmed by the derogatory use of the word um, by taking it back for ourselves and giving it a new meaning, new connotations, a new life. Pussy is in the midst of a renaissance of sorts. <laughs> you may or may not have noticed. Um, yeah, just like the word cunt after Inga Muschio wrote the cardinal text cunt, A Declaration of Independence. Great book, check it out, highly recommend. Um, just like the reclamation of words like witch or queer or dyke. Just like so many other pejoratives that feminists have taken back as an essential part of the reclamation of the collective self-esteem of womankind. And most of these words weren't reviled or derogatory in the first place, like way back in the day. So, you know, if you trace back their origin, origins and meanings, um, you can usually discover that they've been debased and disparaged and the meaning has morphed over time in patriarchal society, often because of things like politics and religion, but that they weren't originally reviled or derogatory or pejoratives, you know. So, of course, I'm totally not saying you should use a word if it makes you feel uncomfortable, it doesn't feel right for you. Um, that's not, that's not where I'm coming from. This is just why I use the word nowadays. Uh, and yeah, totally, porn has really popularized the word pussy, which isn't ideal or a very empowering thought for us women. But the purpose of reclaiming a word is to transform its degrading meaning and give it our own meaning because we have the power to do that. Um, in reclaiming a word, we stop allowing the hurtful intent to hold weight or have power over us and our self-confidence. Words are constantly evolving and transforming in language, especially nowadays. So a powerful strategy for those who feel marginalized or attacked can be to take back and repurpose the words that have been used and weaponized against them to insult or label negatively or target them. Uh, hence why pussy has made a comeback. <laughs> so it's not just me, it's already happening. Um, yeah, and like I said, I use many words interchangeably for this powerful part of anatomy. Uh, and I invite you to experiment with this too. See how it makes you feel to use different words. See if you can transform how you feel about a certain word like pussy or cunt and if you can use it in a way that serves you. The less words that have a harmful effect on you uh, or make you feel uncomfortable, the more empowered you'll feel. And that's a, that's a plus. So it's, 
something that I felt was valuable to work on for myself. And I feel very liberated and free now that I can use words like pussy and cunt without having that that negative kind of, oh, you know, without having it sting. Um, so I hope this video has cleared some things up for you if you've been wondering why anyone would use such a word uh, and that it's given you some food for thought. If this is a, you know, if this sort of topic is your jam, make sure you subscribe and follow me for more content in the realms of sex education and women's empowerment. That is totally my jam. Um, and if you're not already one of the legendary participants in my epic online course, Queen Out, the course that I mentioned at the top of this video, then I'd highly recommend jumping on board to join me for an incredible journey of, um, you know, empowerment and learning and healing and, you know, it's going to level up your sex life and your confidence and your self-love and transform your relationship to yourself and others in and out of the bedroom. It's, it's a one-stop shop and I'm very proud of it. So I'd love to have you on board if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, the details will be below this video for that. And of course, my podcast, The Labia Lounge, has a lot of great resources and info and educational content there, lots of storytelling, lots of discussions um, that will hopefully be really inspiring and relatable. So that's a free resource that you can access if you aren't in a place to jump into the, the paid offerings like my course. Um, but yeah, I just really wanted to like answer that question because I was getting it a fair bit. So now I can just direct people to this video and so that you know where I'm coming from when I bandy around terms like pussy. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, everyone. I hope that that was uh, inspiring or at least, you know, thought provoking for you.